I've been in real estate for over 25 years, and I could say that I've been through it all. From hitting the million dollar mark in my early 20s, the 2008 recession, then bouncing back all over again to each even greater goals. And maybe you wanna try this in this industry too, but you just don't know where to start. So let me share how to earn millions in real estate, my step-by-step -step guide for beginners. Hey guys, I'm Munif. I became a multimillionaire by starting multiple brick and mortar businesses that closed billions of dollars in sales. I'm here to help you with your journey in the world of real estate. So let's get it started. So before you start looking for properties to buy, there's one simple thing you need to do, and that's to build that credit score. I have several videos already where I discuss the importance of the credit score and how to raise that critical thing. It's an actual tool to utilize when you're buying property. But just to recap, you need a good and a high credit score so that lenders can trust giving you the money needed to go ahead and purchase at a lower interest rate than if you didn't have a good credit score. So it's pretty simple. If someone's gonna give you money, AKA a debt, you need to be responsible enough or at least have a credit history that shows that. So what to do if you have a bad credit history? First, you need to improve it immediately. It takes some time for these lenders to reassess your score because if you have a bad one, lenders won't even bother considering you for a loan. And if you do get one, it's likely gonna cost you more money to get the loan and to keep the loan. One of the things that helped me greatly in the beginning in my early 20s was that I was really responsible. I was in the military. I had to pay things on time or you know, face the consequences as well. And I always ended up paying on time and I didn't have a whole lot of credit, but the credit that I did have was a high enough score to give me the kind of loans that I needed. So make sure that you maintain that if you're in your early 20s and if you're not and you already have not so good credit, think about ways to constantly improve your credit because it is critical. And aside from building your credit score back up, saving funds is also recommended since you will need to spend quite a lot when you're starting this business of being a real estate investor. You would need to set aside at least five to 20% of your money because that is the usual amount required for a down payment on most properties, depending on the programs that you use. Just make sure that you enter real estate with some funds because you will need it. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say you don't need any funds and you know you can start in real estate right away. You have to look for quite a long time and what the current market is doing right now, people are not just giving away properties and they're certainly not being really creative with their financing. What I mean is most people are not gonna end up carrying a loan so you can get into the property for free. Now look, I know, I know there's a lot of people wanting you to buy their program so they can show you how they bought a high rise in Manhattan with zero down, but it's BS because I want to give you real deal advice. I'm not saying it never happens. I'm not saying it is impossible. I'm saying it's next to impossible. So if you want to figure out how to do this at scale, take the steps that I'm giving you as their real world practical advice and it's not tied to you buying some kind of program from me. The second step is that you need to show proof of income to your lenders. Aside from using it to see if you're a reliable buyer, Lenders need proof of income, like a tax return, so they can use these earnings as a basis of how much money they're going to lend you. And if you're self-employed, they want a few years of tax returns, and then they take the average between the two years, and that's the basis for your loan. And if you have a salary, they'll just check one year of your tax return. And if you're not sure about what documents you're going to be filing as far as taxes, sit down with your tax professional and tell them what your goals are about property investment. And if you're not sure about what exactly you'll need, just meet with a lender and ask them what type of documents that you need to bring to the table so that you can get pre-approved. All of these things are going to help determine ultimately what you're gonna qualify for. So that's true, no income, no loan. I could just about bet you on that if you wanna go for a traditional loan. Once you've shown proof that you're a reliable borrower, the next step you need to do is to get pre-qualified loans from lenders. Sometimes homeowners get disappointed when they're seeing a property they're interested in, but they realize they can't afford it. That is why I recommend getting pre-qualified or even pre-approved before you start looking for properties. This will save you a lot of time going back and forth with owners and realtors and banks trying to make a deal. All these things ensure that the process is smoother and you can save a whole lot of time. And the time you um, save, you can utilize it to look for more property. But it just doesn't stop here. Once you have a rate sheet, it's time to go around and kind of check some prices from other banks because shopping always helps you score a better loan sometimes. But just be careful. You don't want them running your credit everywhere you go. So I advise advise you have some type of a copy of a credit report before you go shopping. And the difference, even in a minute amount of interest rate over the course of the loan can be huge. Now you might have a relationship where, you know, this person has been your lifelong friend or whatnot. 
make sure you still check their rates. And if you work with the lender for a long time or your family has, make sure you check their rates as well. Now, if the relationship uh, is really, really important and it's only a marginal amount, barter with them to get it down a little bit. But don't worry too much if a lender says they need to you know, run your credit, because if you're applying for multiple pre-qual loans from different banks in a short period of time, it could still be recorded as a single inquiry as long as each application that you make is between 30 to 60 days. It's still gonna have an impact, but if it means you getting a stellar rate, go for it. And this is kind of a, a newer thing because specifically this type of rule in credit reporting was added so that there would be an encouragement from homeowners and investors to actually go out and shop for rates. If each time they ran your credit, if it just kept sinking down lower and lower, by the time you finally shopped for your home or your investment property, your credit score would be shot. But don't worry about it too much, but also do consider picking the right partners in this lending field. So go ahead and interview as many lenders as possible and then check their rates and you're ultimately gonna work with whoever you like. So don't be too afraid to shop around at all. After you've done all that, next you need to research and scout out properties. Once you have your paperwork ready, you can go out there and check out the different areas, determine what areas you wanna invest in, where you wanna buy, what type of properties, and you're gonna be looking for stuff that's undervalued. So you're not gonna walk to an apartment building or a home that's already flipped, that's in pristine condition. You wanna look for something that you can add value in, and you wanna invest in areas that are up and coming. One tip for checking locations is that you look for areas where it's neighboring other areas where the overall price is a bit higher than the area you're in, but it's really close. You wanna look at cost of living, you wanna look at commercial development, you wanna see if new stores are going up, you wanna discover the neighborhood, see if there's progress being made, and most likely, if the surrounding areas are already occupied and busy and doing well, then that area right next to it will also see appreciation. This is how to look for undervalued locations. For example, I'm here in Los Angeles, California, and I looked for properties in the beginning that were what they say west of the 405 freeway. And I found it to be, I didn't look at A plus locations. There were areas in the city of Los Angeles that were like Brentwood and West LA. I didn't, those were like A plus locations and I couldn't invest in those. So instead I chose to invest in B plus areas, areas that were up and coming and not so expensive so that I could still make money on a positive income side because it was important to me because my income wasn't that great. So I looked for properties that were in not so good condition in areas that weren't pristine and this is how you find deals. So if you're stuck on location, 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 I'm only going to invest in prime properties and great locations, you're going to pay a premium. And yes, in appreciation over time, it can go up as a young investor and young meaning you're just starting out and investing in real estate, look for opportunities. And those opportunities lie in places that people have not truly started investing in. To assess if a neighborhood is really developing, the stuff you wanna check is how close are tourist attractions? Are they getting new restaurants? Are there new hotels and apartment buildings being made? Is there a lot of renovation going on? Then you wanna back that up with checking for data. Is there an increased amount of residents in the area? And don't also forget to go to open houses and see what the inventory is like in a given area. Are properties on the market that are all redone and, and wonderfully you know, have all the amenities and all of them are flips, then there's a a lot of investment going on in the area. In the beginning, I would go for properties that just need a little light cosmetic thing. You know, let's say they still have grandma's, you know, dookie green carpet on, on the floors. That's an opportunity for you to pull up that carpet and then put wood floors in, throw some paint on, a little bit of gardening. I wouldn't get into complete gut out remodels in the beginning. So if you're first time starting out, I would look for things that are icky and nasty and need cleanup, but you can get away with putting a little bit of paint, landscaping a little bit, doing those light things, you know, okay, maybe a light remodeling job on changing the countertops in the bathroom, maybe changing the cabinets in the kitchen. Those kind of things, light stuff, get in, get out, make your money, keep moving, or get in and out and hold it. I don't know, Airbnb it, you can go ahead and rent it out. There's a lot of different ways but what you're looking for is undervalued. The next step is to make as many offers on potential properties that you found during your research. Keep in mind that you need to be patient with offers that you're making and save yourself, your real estate professional, or whoever a lot of time by making offers that are reasonable. Don't go out there and you see a $300,000 property, depending on where you are. I wish I found a $300,000 property here in Los Angeles. If you find a $300,000 property in the area you want and everything, don't go out there and lowball it to 50,000 or 100,000 thousand make reasonable offers yes you want to have a little discount and a little bit of padding based on the research you did so you walked in and you 
notice there was green carpet, you notice that the countertops had to be done, that doesn't mean that it's gonna cost you $50,000 to do the cosmetic fix up. That doesn't mean you decrease the price $50,000 either. What it means is you're gonna end up paying what the market is bearing at that time and because it's cosmetically challenged, you could get a little bit of a discount. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't just equate how much the fix up cost is going to be with what you're gonna end up paying because the market ultimately decide what real estate is going to sell for and that is driven by qualified buyers but get in the practice of making as many offers as possible and don't give in to the fear of getting rejected or even overspending on a property because if you've done your research right you're investing in an area that's coming up you're finding properties that meet your criteria you're doing the math and knowing exactly how much money you have to invest to turn it around either and this works for either buy and hold or buy and flip or buy and rent it doesn't matter what you do you always can use the same scenario and look be aware that you're going to end up spending a lot of money this is real estate it's not like buying clothes or shoes or something else it's going to be thousands of dollars and you have to be able to commit a lot of your time because this is a business and you have to make tactical business decisions so be patient wait for people to take your offer don't give in to your emotions there will be a lot of time for you to make hundreds of offers before you end up closing deals and you have to understand especially as a brand new investor if you're not getting into some of these deals that you're putting offers on it could be you're unreasonable it could be that you don't have enough data it could be if you're working with a real estate professional maybe you're not listening to their advice you have to continuously start to tweak and don't make so many offers you don't know where all your offers are especially in the beginning get used to making a few offers sitting back and seeing what happens get some feedback have your agent and if you're representing yourself ask okay well what could I have done done to get this deal through how was my pricing how was the terms because it's not just about price it's also about terms was your escrows too long was it too short was there special things that you required did the was the owner of the property looking for certain things and you didn't come up with them so always get feedback this will help you learn to become a savvy investor over time don't wait too long for the perfect deal you might not get all your criteria but it's also important for you to move on the market the market's always giving you an opportunity and hindsight is also so a killer so don't look back and go oh my god i could have i should have i would have bought that property you didn't move on to the next and continue to grow through the whole experience of this process right here perfect deals are always around you just have to find them and get in your head what is perfect for you let me share some of my own experiences in the early years when i was first starting out apartment investing you know i was too locked into what the cosmetic look was you know like and i wanted a certain type of building heck i'm not gonna live there i'm renting it out so i had to over time get used to what was an investment for me versus do i really like it it's the same way with making content if you're making content you want to see what people are searching for not necessarily what I want to hear coming out of my own self so when you're looking for product out there it's not where you're going to live unless it is you're looking for a duplex you're gonna live in one rent out the other one then be mindful of the condition of the property and get your mind straight with regard to it is an investment and therefore it doesn't have to be perfect the perfect time is when you actually pull the trigger and buy property and years later a lot of my friends came back and said you should have forced me to buy a property or I wish I would have gotten into real estate when you did fact of the matter is they didn't see the vision so continue on this until you get the desired outcome let's get to the offer it's been accepted the next step is to do inspections it's going to be a lot easier for you to close a deal if you totally understand the condition of the property and let me point out the inspection is not so that you can haggle the price down the inspection is for you to understand the condition of the property and understand what you're getting into and in tight markets a lot of investors just forego the inspection period that could happen if you become seasoned enough at a later stage but we're talking about you just getting in the game so I highly recommend that you inspect every single property so you understand the condition of it and once you build up enough experience that's another conversation to be had but in the beginning tooth and nail go through it and like I said it's not for you to barter the price down it's really there for you to understand what you're getting into are you paying the right price you know is everything in the property the condition you need it to be I mean you might come across some foundation issues you're a first-time investor you don't know how much it's gonna cost that might kill the deal but I rather have you know exactly what you're getting into than going blind don't shoot blind in the beginning and I do recommend you bring several contractors along as well to get bids especially if you're not handy I don't recommend as an investor you play the role of a real estate agent an inspector a contractor
contractor just so you can keep all the money. I'd rather have you look for deals out there while utilizing real estate professionals and professional contractors because time is money and the faster you go through this process, the more money you potentially can make. Do I know people that wear all the hats? Absolutely, but it takes a lot of time and patience and you end up missing a lot of deals because you're so involved in the day to day. Remember, this is a business. I can't be the owner, I can't work the front, I can't do the supply room, I can't do the, be the waiter or the hostess, I can't wear all hats and have a successful restaurant. You have to think the same way about the real estate business. Now let's take a little break. I'm giving away a free book to help you on your journey to achieve financial freedom. Thank you for your continuous support. And simply by clicking the link in the description down below, you get a free copy of my ebook. Good luck on your journey towards financial freedom. After inspecting your property, another exciting part comes along the way and that's to do the work. So since you bought something undervalued in an area that's probable the price is gonna go up in a few months or a few years, now you have to immediately add some equity, some forced equity, I'd like to say, by simply remodeling and making improvements, cosmetically and sometimes structurally and mechanically as well, like plumbing. And once these renovations are done, now you can either charge more to rent it out or resell it. That's what a flip is. And like I said, if you don't know how to do any of the work, look, I'm a licensed contractor, but I rarely do, not rarely, I never have done the work in doing a flip. I hire people that can move twice as fast as I do, then I can put the property back out there so that I can spend more time looking for what I'm looking for. You can find a lot of contractors out there, but make sure you look at reviews. I'm gonna get some amount of contractor and some amount of realtor hate because I'm not always fascinated by contractors in that a lot of them aren't truly business people and they run, run from one job to the next. So if you're going to interview contractors, make sure that they've done flips before. So they have a crew that moves fast. So you're not tied into, you know, every single day you're paying money um, in the form of a loan or, or holding costs or whatever. And that ultimately cuts into your profitability. So make sure word of mouth is not just good enough these days when dealing with contractors, make sure they're licensed and they're bonded, make sure they have reviews. And then same thing on the, on the realtor side, you're not just going to get somebody who is doing this part-time as a part-time time teacher, part-time police officer, part-time firefighter, and expect them to give 100% of their time and effort to you to find those pieces that are hiding out from everyone else. So they're not going to go out there looking for gems if they just don't have the time. Look for the right team. And that means that you're going to have to spend a little time interviewing people and knowing the process and going out there and working with people will ultimately give you the experience needed to be able to judge if you're going to work with this person or that person. Finally, I like to also recommend that you have some money for emergency stuff that comes up. So you've got a contractor, someone who's already working on the property, but you don't want to be so thin on the budget that you have no money left over in case something happens, whether a pipe bursts or all of a sudden, you know, you notice there's cracks in the foundation whatever it is have 10 to 20 percent set aside for emergency renovations or costs going up in this pandemic there's a lot of contractors working with people and the price of lumber shot up and some contractors ran off and some never completed their jobs and some few honest ones came back to people and said hey the cost of lumber has gone up I need a you know I need to be able to cushion with this and that's really commendable and some people just ate it and said you know what this was my bid price it went up I'm just gonna do it but that amount of people was very slim now after all that preparation you've hunted down the property you've done your paperwork you got the loans you cleaned your credit you acquired the property now it's being renovated now all you need to do is find a tenant the same thing applies you have to post it online you can go word of mouth get a process together so you can find that one realtor that's going to sell it for you get your process together so you understand when you're renting and when you're gonna sell and if you hold it remember every 10 to 15 years the price of that property is going to keep going up and this is what my secret sauce was I wait a little bit for the property to appreciate massively while it's being rented and let somebody else pay my mortgage and then I pull money out and redo the same step over and over again Because buying up to three to four properties a year ever since my 20s and I never stopped I'm 50 years old do the math and I have some other secret steps that you can utilize that are not so secret go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well so when I come out with a new video you're notified thank you for watching and if you want to learn more about earning money 10 tips on how I became a millionaire in my 20s